Welcome to Airborne Flight Training, coming up on this week's episode. Diamond's Electric DA40 finds fans. Lyft and Tuskegee University collaborate to build Tuskegee U Flight School. University of Oklahoma adds aircraft to training fleet. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to Airborne Flight Training, a weekly program dedicated to future aviators and aviation professionals. Airborne Flight Training is brought to you in part by King Schools. King Schools has been leading the effort in producing expert aviation training programs and computer-based learning software for 50 years. Find out why pilots love King teaching at kingschools.com. Now let's get into today's stories. Diamond's Electric DA-40 finds fans. Diamond Aircraft recently completed a little pilot project with Lufthansa Aviation Training, putting a pair of their battery-powered EDA-40s to the test in some true-to-life training operations. The results are good enough to brag about, apparently, since both Diamond and Lufthansa Training said the EDA-40 passed muster. The project saw engineers and flight test pilots head to Dubendorf Airport in Germany to carry out five assessment flights. Diamond hoped to uncover any developmental issues, weaknesses, or irritations ahead of full commercial release, and who better than one of the biggest customers of the DA-40NG? Lufthansa Aviation Training pilots spend every day with the diesel-powered version, so they are a good indicator of just how much the electric one deviates from that flight experience. In short, the EDA-40 is surprisingly quiet, both inside the cabin and from the ground, but all things considered, it handles just like a piston engine diamond. That's great news for the manufacturer, since the EDA-40 should end up being the first certified electric airplane in its category when it reaches the ASA certification in 2025. Matthias Spohr, CEO of Lufthansa Aviation Training, said, quote, The European Flight Academy, the flight school of Lufthansa Group, is not only dedicated to highest training standards, but also commits itself to new approaches to foster sustainability in aviation, end quote. After the break, Fernandina Beach Airport eyes automated landing fees to target flight training. thing to share the joy and love of flying. Our customers fly to remote places. They use our products to go places that are difficult to get to. Hearts has been an excellent partner for Whip Air, uh, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demands. And it is that shared experience and the joy of flying that brings us all back and charges all of our batteries up. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Fernandina Beach Airport eyes automated landing fees to target flight training. The Fernandina Beach, Florida Municipal Airport is currently considering implementing an automated aircraft landing fee system. During a recent Airport Advisory Commission meeting, representatives from Vector Airport Systems detailed their plane pass program. The system utilizes aircraft tracking technologies to identify and bill aircraft landings, excluding local pilots who hangar their planes at the airport. The motivation behind the landing fees is not only to bolster airport revenues, but also to manage and reduce the impact of noise from flight school operations, particularly those involving repetitive touch-and-go landings. NTSB endorses FAA regulation on controller duty time. The NTSB has long highlighted the risks associated with fatigue among air traffic controllers, advocating for changes to ensure they receive adequate rest. Recently, NTSB Chair Jennifer Homendy praised the new FAA regulation requiring air traffic controllers to have at least 10 hours off between shifts and 12 hours off before a midnight shift. This policy adjustment aims to enhance safety by ensuring controllers are well-rested and alert. This initiative comes after tragic incidents that underscore the severe implications of controller fatigue. Wheels Up gives Colorado Operation the axe. 
Has-been private gen operator Wheels Up has notified employees at one of its locations that they would be laid off in the near future, putting 65 people out of work. The operator told those at the Rocky Mountain Metropolitan Airport of Jefferson County, Colorado, that pretty much all Wheels Up employees there would be getting the axe. The announcement reads, quote, all of Wheels Up's operations at the hangar are expected to cease, end quote. It effectively puts to rest ops for the Uber for Jets operator at the third largest airfield in the state. French LSA manufacturer establishes toehold in Florida, expanding home facilities. French sport plane manufacturer Elixir Aircraft announced a continuation of its production expansions, this time adding facilities in the U.S. and France. The new location in France will see the addition of 10,700 square feet near Elixir's flagship location in La Rochelle, France. Stateside, Elixir will open a reassembly facility in Florida at the Sarasota Bradenton Airport. Parts delivered from France will be checked, inspected, and assembled into full aircraft there, with the Florida location becoming the administrative, sales, and support hub for the entire U.S. domestic market. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Lyft and Tuskegee University collaborate to build Tuskegee U Flight School. In a significant step forward for aviation education in Alabama, Leadership in Flight Training Academy and Tuskegee University have unveiled the inaugural Tuskegee University Flight School. This marks a pioneering collaboration aimed at fostering a new generation of aviation professionals. The newly established flight school is set to offer a comprehensive four-year bachelor's degree program in aviation science, allowing students to graduate with both a degree and a private pilot license after completing 120 credit hours of combined classroom and hands-on flight training. Additionally, the school will introduce an 18-month certificate curriculum specifically designed for non-degree seekers, requiring up to 39 credit hours. This program aims to make aviation training accessible to a broader audience beyond the current university students. Alabama Governor Kay Ivey highlighted the historical significance of Moton Field, the training ground of the original Tuskegee Airmen, as the chosen location for this initiative. Quote, Lyft Academy is an ideal way to build on the legacy of the Tuskegee Airmen by creating solid career opportunities for tomorrow's pilots, end quote. The partnership was officially launched at a joint press conference held at Moton Field Municipal Airport, featuring a lineup of distinguished speakers from the political, educational, and corporate spheres. After these messages, University of Oklahoma adds aircraft to training fleet. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. University of Oklahoma adds aircraft to training fleet. The University of Oklahoma celebrated a significant expansion in its aviation training capabilities with the introduction of 11 new aircraft to its School of Aviation. This event, which took place on Friday at OU's Max Westheimer Airport, featured the arrival of the school's first two helicopters and nine Piper single-engine airplanes. OU President Joseph Harris Jr. highlighted the importance of the new additions, stating, quote, Welcoming these new aircraft today marks a significant milestone that serves as a tangible illustration of OU's longstanding commitment to strategically align with our state's workforce needs, end quote. The new aircraft are expected to significantly boost the training capacity at the School of Aviation, advancing OU's goal of expanding its fleet to 28 aircraft. These additions are particularly notable as the new airplanes are classified by the FAA as, quote, technically advanced aircraft. They feature the latest in aviation technology, including moving map GPS, glass cockpit avionics, automated engine and systems management, and an autopilot system. Moreover, these planes are equipped with more powerful and fuel-efficient engines that will lower operating costs, enhancing the sustainability of the program. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.